Dynatrace app developers, and welcome back to another episode of Inside Dynatrace Apps. Today we have a very special episode because we're actually at Perform. So I have with me Duke. So I'm a product manager for App Engine and have been with the project of App Engine since we started it. And I'm happy to answer every question that you might have. Excellent. So today we're going to be going through a little bit about the future of apps and what is in store and why we would want to even create apps. So first question we're going to ask is why would we want to create an app anyway? So that's a good question and there could be multiple use cases uh, that you could think of where it actually makes sense to build an app. So usually what we heard from our customers in, in the conversations we had when uh, we were starting out with the app engine was that there are some integrations to third party systems that might be missing, either to push data through those systems or to fetch data from those systems. Another big point was also that uh, it was really hard to customize like the UI in Dynatrace we had. And now with App Engine, it's actually uh, easy to build an app that really has a bespoke uh, user interface that really addresses the use case that you're actually trying to solve. And I guess th th these two are the most uh, important ones. And the third one still is that uh, we often found that it, it doesn't make sense all of the time to ingest all of the data into Dynatrace that you still want to display in Dynatrace. So what we actually can do now is um, augment the data we have in Grail in the Dynatrace platform with uh, some external data we fetch from external systems and have that then displayed in an aggregated way in an app, for example. So I would say these are these are good use cases that you can now actually do with apps. Can you maybe share a use case of that we've seen here in Perform that's a great use case for developing an app instead of maybe using a dashboard or a notebook? Yeah, and I actually think the, the app that we did in the, in the hot day session, and you were part of that, <laughs> is a pretty good example of what our customers can actually achieve with, with an app. So, I mean, we have a great dashboarding solution. There is no doubt about that. And uh, we, we will continue to add functionality to that one as well. Um, but then to actually provide uh, interactive interactions with the data you actually see, and provides individual drill downs to this data within one uh, user interface uh, to be able to do custom uh, like visualizations and indicators of stuff that is happening in your data and then being able to trigger custom actions upon that data that you see uh, is where you would actually make a lot of sense to start out with an app because you might be limited with what dashboards and notebooks offer. Still, it's usually a natural progression that you start out with usually a dashboard or a notebook. And once you see the need to actually, that you want to drill down further and want to show more detailed data, like in a drill down uh, uh, way to that, what you already have, uh, it, it might come actually natural then to start thinking out about building an app for that. So I wanted to know, in terms of the integrations between my app and the actual platform, is everything working seamlessly between, say, notebooks, dashboards, and my app? Yeah, that is a good question. So, on the one hand, the, we provide a lot of SDKs that like abstract all of the APIs that we provide in the platform, which means in your app, you can seamlessly use all of the APIs that the platform provides, be it for documents, state, settings, and so on and so forth, given you have the right set of permissions, of course. <laughs> um, and as for integrations with dashboards and notebooks, so with, with App Engine, we introduced this concept of intents, where you can share out of any given app that runs uh, the context where you are right now, so a good example would be you have a time series chart of some specific data 
and you want to actually drill down even more and have the query that is behind this time chart, uh, time series chart, and display it in notebooks to actually see what kind of filters are applied and get a better insight in of what we're actually doing here. Um, so you can, like, uh, with most of the time series charts we have, send an intent to the to the app engine and give the query as a parameter, and then you get to select uh, all of the apps that can, like, work with the DQL query. So most notably, the dashboard uh, app that would like add a tile that renders the result of that DQL query. Notebooks app that would add a section to the notebook or opens a new notebook and adds that query into that section. Or the workflows app that would create a new workflow and as a first task, uh, put in a DQL query task with exactly that query. So. Every app that you that you build uh, on the App Engine is actually seamlessly integrated through the mechanisms that the App Engine provides, and it feels like any other app that that, that we ourselves wrote. Um, you can do the same things uh, with customs app that anyone, customers or partners build. So effectively, pulling them all together is making each one more powerful in analyzing your data, monitoring it over. And you can do it however you want, plus use all the functionality that's already there. So pretty cool. It's a win-win. Yeah. <laughs> it's a win-win. So you talked about limitations earlier, talking about you're going to get to a limitation in a dashboard, you're going to get a limitation in a notebook, because eventually you're going to want these bespoke sort of things, and that's why we want an app. But is there actually limitations in the apps themselves? There are. There are uh, a couple of limitations, of course, because we we can't just let go all developers rogue and just build whatever <laughs> they want. So there are certain limitations to how large an app bundle could actually be all packed together. There is a limitation in how long a function can actually run. So right now we're at 120 seconds. Although we're already working on, on being able to provide some functionality that that you can continue to process if you need something that really it takes longer time just because it's such a huge amount of data or because the API you're querying the data from might be slow. Another limitation I can think of right now would be uh, you're limited in the Dynatrace JavaScript runtime right now to a memory of 265 megabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we already have some items on the roadmap to be able to increase this value to allow to be able to process more data within within our function runtime, basically. And there are way more limitations, but it, 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 it wouldn't be a lot of sense to actually list all of them now. <laughs> That's good. I mean, we can't let them run wild, right? That's so. true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next question for you talks a little bit about the future of Dynatrace apps and where are we really going with this? So is there anything on the roadmap for the future coming um, to make making apps easier? Because I know now we have our strata design components and stuff like that, but do we have anything else that's going to help us with our app development in the near future? Um, so I think we, we did a pretty well job until, up until now to make it as easy as possible, but of, of course there are still some in improvements, if you will, that we still have on the roadmap. So. For example, we are going to improve on the topic of self-monitoring of the apps that you build yourself. So right now we are able to, to capture the logs that your app writes. And so, so somewhere in the nearer future, so I won't give you an exact date, of course, uh, we will also be able to have like end-to-end -end traces and real user monitoring data for those custom apps to actually gain more insight also how the users of the apps uh, actually use the app. So you'll be able to find out if they are using them the way you intended them to be used and uh, maybe where you can improve on that. That's one thing. Another thing is that we will just uh, continue to add functionality that you can uh, ship with apps. So apps will continue to get more powerful over time. So for example, we are working on 
being able to ship templates for dashboards, notebooks, or workflows together with an app bundle. Um, we already have the possibility to ship workflow actions with apps, so that is great as well. And we also, because we have this discussion uh, already with our internal customers as well, uh, we will provide the possibility at one point in time to run functions that an app provides like on the schedule in the background. So have simple example, uh, every day at midnight fetch, fetch the current price list on AWS. So for your cloud cost, proje uh, cloud cost projection, you have the current data that is out there. And that is something that uh, apps will be able to do well in the, in the months to come, let's say. So we're at Perform. It's a pretty big conference. There's a lot of lights going on. And to finish off today's presentation, I want to ask you, what is the strangest thing you've seen at the conference today? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I'd say the strangest thing is was uh, at, at the last main stage slot, I actually thought some people of Cirque du Soleil broke out and just, <laughs> just, <It's true. laughs> just went on our stage and did funny stuff with unicycles and so on. But it actually was part of the conference and they were from Cirque de Performance or something where I also find the name quite a fitting to the name <laughs> of our conference. So yeah, it was pretty great to watch them actually. Thank you so much today for being here with me and doing this quick sort of interview. I hope you enjoy the rest of Perform. Thanks, you too. Thanks for having me. So that's it for another episode of Inside Dino Juice Ups. We hope to see you next time. Bye.